Hi, I'm Captain Mike. Today's video is going to be about how to make some really inexpensive and easy to make pottery tools. Uh, there's all kinds of pottery tools on uh, YouTube and how to make them, but we're going to, uh, going to uh, sort of zero in on these type tools like this. Uh, they're very, very easy to make, very useful, and will cost you literally nothing. These tools are made out of metal banding material, like you see here. This is usually found at warehouses and places where stuff comes in on a pallet. It comes in in two sizes. This is three quarters of an inch. This is a little larger. I'd say an inch, maybe a tad more. I don't use much of this, but it does make a sturdy tool. This is usually what I make. It's the standard. It's getting harder to find this. Uh, most of the companies are going to uh, plastic banding material now. So if you find some of this, you know, grab it up and keep it for later use if you don't have any immediate use for it. This is how you make these things. It's really simple. First, you gather your tools and you're going to need something to cut this material with. And for the three quarters, I use this right here. Uh, these come from Harbor Freight. They're very inexpensive and they're just cable cutters. That's all they are. And they don't take a lot. You can just kind of get the distance that you want, the length you want, and cut it off. That. And um, that's it. Now, an alternate method to this, and a very, if you're going to make a lot of these, is to use this tool right here. Uh, it also comes from Harbor Freight. They're not real expensive and they have a lot of uses around the shop. It just has a, uh, uh, an asbestos cutoff wheel. It's just a very small cutoff wheel. Uh, so if you have one of these, it's great. You can just whack it down. It doesn't leave an edge or doesn't leave any curl much at all and that works great. The only other electrical tool that you might need, well actually it's not a might tool, you're going to need one or you're going to do a lot of sanding and grinding is a grinding wheel. Get the most inexpensive grinding wheel you can find. Harbor Freight again has these things. Very small models. This one just happened to be sitting outside. I don't use it much anymore. It has a, a water wheel on it, uh, but this is the wheel that you'll use. So if you just buy a very small one, it does not take much whatsoever to uh, grind these things. And that's all that you're going to need in the way of electric tools. A couple of pair of different types of pliers always come in handy, and I'm sure you have those. And a file and a tape measure. And this is how you do it. It's real simple. First, decide how long you want your tool. In the case of these right here, I, uh, um, I made the handle six inches, and I made the turn up about an inch, the 90 degree. They can be any degree that you want them, depending on the shape and the type of tool you're going to use and what you're going to use it for. We have a different length tool I'll show you in closing. Uh, but I decided to make these six, seven inches overall. And so all I do is take and decide where seven inches is going to be and whack it off. It's not rocket science. It doesn't take a whole lot. And that's it. You've got the major part of it done. Now, when you use these tools, sometimes, I know you probably can't see that, but it makes a little kind of a curve up on it. I take a ball peen hammer and I might tap that out if I don't want to grind it off. But the next thing you'll do is decide on the shape that you want this. I always put the shape in them before I bend them, but they, you can have all kinds of shapes. Uh, you can get online and actually uh, you can get pictures of all of these and, you know, what they do and what you want to do with them. And once you have determined your, your, uh, the shape that you want, you will go ahead and cut it. Now that's where this comes in really handy right here, this little, this little thing right here. It comes in really good and handy for cutting these angles. But you can also just plain grind them on the grinding wheel to whatever shape you want. It's the same with something like this. You just grind it, you just take it and grind it straight of course, and you'll grind it like that and on this side and you'll get this, the shape you want. You'll have to fool with that and come up with the, the, the different shapes. But once you get the shape 
the way that you want it, then you just take a pair of pliers. Uh, I use these here. They also make some vice grip type welding pliers that has a wider piece right here. Uh, but you just grab them about an inch down wherever you think is appropriate and you just bend it. Just like that. Wear gloves. I never wear gloves. I got the scars to prove it. But be safe. Wear gloves. And of course, wear glasses all the time you're doing this. I forget to mention it earlier on because I wear glasses. But that's what you get. It is that simple that you've got your basic tool. Now, I make this tool right here just like I showed you before I bent it with this angle on it right here. It's a very good tool for trimming the bottoms of pots on my uh, wheel. So a tip I'm going to give you when you make, and you, usually you use a wooden one, but if you make a metal one to use on your wheel, make sure you kind of blunt that end right there because a lot of the wheels have plastic bats and you'll be scoring your bat. So you'll just kind of blunt that right there so that when you're going on the bottom of your pot, when you're doing the bottom of your pot like this, you guys know what I'm talking about, and you're, you're, you're trimming off the bottom of your pot, that won't eat up your plastic bat or your aluminum bat. And uh, that's, that's how you make this, just as simple as that. Put the shape on the edge you want, come back about an inch and bend it up. It's made. Now, some of these have these nice, swell little red handles on them. And the first thing that you think is, well, I dipped it in that paint. And I guess that would work. The paint at Harbor Freight's about 12 bucks a bottle. And I'm not a fan of it because you have to dip it multiple times. This is heat shrink. And you can get it, this is like three quarter heat shrink. You can get a half, uh, um, half inch actually will fit on this. Uh, you push it on it and then, Let's say like that. We cut you a piece first. Let me back up. You cut you a piece first and you'll slide it on. Center it up kind of and then you take your uh, heat shrink gun or your just heat gun and you heat it and it, it makes it like that. Makes it more comfortable but it's not necessary. You can use it just just as well. Now this last tool that I'm going to show you here is uh, one that I saw last week at one of my classes uh, when I asked uh, my uh, instructor at, at the uh, pottery class to show us all how to do chattering. I had tried to do some chattering on some pottery in my shop and I was having a difficult time getting the tool to jump and I'll talk to you about chattering in a minute. But he drug out his tool and it looked just like this. It has this nice big hook in it and it's kind of long which means if you want it to really jump, you can get back here and hold it and it'll start to really jump. If you want to choke up on it to do other things, you can. So you could make all of these longer if you wanted to. Experiment with it for what it's going to cost you to make them. You can experiment all day long and just until you get some tools that you're crazy about. Now, I should have started off telling you about all this, but I didn't because you've asked yourself, well, Crazy Mike, why, what the heck do we need all that for to start with? Uh, if you throw on a wheel, uh, and if you don't, if you throw things like this out of a, a mold, you can also do it. You can put it on these turntables like this. But the whole point of this is, is to put, number one, is to put uh, lines on your, uh, on your pot. Now this is a really ugly pot right here. It's not even centered uh, right. It's kind of flop-sided. The reason for that is this was a big chunk of almost, well, I won't say dried out. It was, it was a very dry slip that had gotten away from me. And so I wedged it up, stuck it on the wheel, and said, let's just see if I can throw a pot out of dried slip. It works, but it's hard. It's hard to get it to consistency. So it's flop-sided, and so this won't work exactly right. But if you if you start with this, and it's on your wheel, and you have your pot centered properly, you can do this th while it's in this shape, and before you remove it from the bat, or after you turn it over to do the foot, you can do it at the same time. It really doesn't matter. Uh, but it, this just kind of, you know, you just get yourself a nice... Uh, this is going to, of course, work out real good, but I just want you to see, because I can always goof throw this pot back. Uh, you know, you can just make your lines like that. Now, <laughs> those are ugly lines, but you can kind of see that it'll put a line on it. 
see that line right there? So you can put lines on it, and of course you wouldn't do it like I did it because you wanna you wanna hold it perfectly straight and the wheel be spinning and you guys that do wheel work know the technique. You probably already know about all this junk too and I'm wasting your time. However, that's what this is about. Now the chattering technique is something I don't know how to do very well. Uh, I, um, what I do with my chattering technique, there it is. You can do it with these small tools also. But the idea on that is the same time. And most people do the chattering uh, before they, uh, I mean, after they've done the foot. I say most people, that's, that's, a, that's a misinformation. I really don't know what most people do. Most of them that I have seen do some chattering work uh, when they're doing the foot. They'll flip this over, they'll do their nice, neat foot, then they'll chatter. I've also seen a couple of guys, one in particular, and I, I'm not even going to attempt to uh, pronounce his name, but he's an oriental guy and he's really, really good. Uh, if I can think to dig his name up, I'll put it at the bottom in the instructions in the bottom of this video because his videos are worth watching, especially for the chattering. Because the chattering does some neat stuff, but the chattering is where you You'll, this thing will be spinning on your potter's wheel. It's very difficult to do on this. I guess you could if you wanted to center it and get somebody to spin it for you. And you will hold the tool and it will grab. You've got to go back further than this. You've got to make the wheel, the uh, tool grab and jump. And as it jumps, it pops and it comes on. You just move it on down slowly and it will uh, make some really unique patterns. So. You might just say that this whole video is about chattering tools because that's the biggest thing that you'd use them for. But you can also use them to put uh, horizontal designs on your pots. And that's how you make them. That's how I make them. Banding material is free. Uh, the uh, grinder, of course, is not free. But if you don't have one in your shop, you ought to get one because a lot of the things I do require a grinder. This, of course, is for touch-up. If you need to get the burrs off or you need to make it sharper, you guys know that routine. It's just a standard file. Again, comes from Harbor Freight, Amazon, wherever you like to get your tools. And uh, uh, that's it. That's real simple. This stuff come off of eBay. It's just heat shrink. And you'll get it the appropriate size to go on the banding material you need. It's not expensive. So that's it. That's all you have to do to uh, uh, make these really cheap tools and you can make them in any design. You can make them in just a few minutes. Uh, they last forever and uh, there's no need to buy them. Just make them. Uh, unless you've got more money than you know what to do with it. And then of course, hey, buy it. It's always fun to buy stuff. So that's it. That is my video on how I make inexpensive do-it-yourself pottery tools or chattering tools if you want to call them that. And just give it a try. Tell me what you think. Tell me how they work for you. And if you have a comment, put it below. And uh, I try to read them all and respond. Okay, I'm Captain Mike. appreciate y'all watching this video. And I'm out of here.